their presentation. We are now recording this chat, so we're going to be able to share it after the effect. Um, if you have any questions or technical difficulties as we go, please just try to send me a message over in the chat conversation, and I'll do my best to help you guys out. And with that, we're going to start off with Brad Hook um, of Brad Hook Professional Photography and Videography. And Brad, thanks for being here with us today. Um, I'm going to try to guess, Brad and I are going to try to guess, he's been on the road and just got back late last night, of what photos he wants to start with in his chat today. Uh, am, I, am I leading things off or are we just introduction? You are leading things off and you can introduce yourself as you lead off here. We're starting with the picture pin. Okay, all right. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am Brad Hook. Uh, 51 years old, been married for 30 long, hard years uh, this year. So please have sympathy for my wife. Uh, with that being said, I, you know, I am a road warrior. Uh, I leave the Iowa State Fair about August 15th. And I have maybe 10 days off until, uh, you know, mid-March. Um, so if you got small kids, I don't recommend this line of the photography deal, but uh, I've got a girl that's 22 and a boy that's a senior in high school. The, my son has a show pig addiction and my daughter's getting married, so I need to be filming in my sleep, if at all possible, to generate enough revenue. So uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, my line of work is pretty much strictly uh, uh, for online sales and for catalog sales of primarily cattle. Uh, my day starts uh, uh, by organizing my client, and that's, that's probably the most important thing to do is to make sure you and your customer are on the same page as far as um, picture pin, picture pin location, um, picture pin size, uh, and, and amount of crew that he has showing up to help him. And, and it's it's kind of amazing how the amount of crew that shows up is determined by the territory you live in. Uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and up in there, they, they can hardly find anybody to help. Nebraska, the entire neighborhood shows up. So it's it's a little bit, uh, you know, it's it, that's part of a struggle. Um, like I say, we always like to make sure that that picture pin is at least 35 yards long by 25 yards wide. And I always tell them to just stand there with their back to the sun every morning uh, around 9.30. And, uh, and just what you're going to see in front of you is what you're going to see in the back of your cattle pictures. And so once we get everybody... ...that location generally the night before, and, and I wake up and I look out the window of the motel. And, and why do I do that? Well... It's going to tell me how my day is going to go about nine times out of ten. If that flag's blowing straight out, it's going to be a long, hard day because uh, wind makes cattle stupid for some reason. Uh, I, I really don't know. It's just, it just makes them uncomfortable. Or, uh, and then, and then of course, the hey, it doesn't matter what the weatherman says that night. Uh, it's what shows up when you look at your Everything. I, have, I use cannons. I use all pro cannons, and and they are very good in low light. To light with a shadow, without sun, to just good light, to overcast, to my stopping point is generally whenever there's it's so dark and dreary, you know, that there's almost fog or that there's mist, and then then that's that's. Uh, that's the end of the road. That's uh, see you tomorrow. So um, once I get on on to the location, uh, of course we get to, uh, everyone in place. Uh, there is certainly uh, certainly tricks to uh, the picture pin workflow, and, and just like anything else, uh, then I have to be somewhere different every day. And so I, I don't have time for error in in uh, not getting complete. So basically a good day um, or, or, or basically a slow day, we can do three to three and a half head per hour. On good days, we can do seven, eight an hour. So as we um, 
as we progress, I, I watch the clock, I watch the sun, uh, and, and try and keep everybody on, on schedule. Um, we all right so far, Jim? Yep, you're cutting out a little bit, so I think it just must be an internet connection, but. Okay. All right. How bad? Bad or not? It's okay, Brad. Okay. I can catch it. You just let me know when you want me to change your slides. Okay, the slide that's up right now. We have to we have to get the crew all on the same page, and in the flow of the cattle it depends a lot on uh, on how they're coming in. Our optimal uh, goal is to get that picture that's going to run in your publication. That bull or that heifer or that camp is. So that's my optimal goal. To reach that, we have to have generally three people in the picture pen, one ear getter and two guys to push, okay? And and we're going to keep those cattle going, of course, with as, mo with as much sun on them as we can. And uh, that sounds uh, real easy in theory, but, uh, you know, just as this, this video shows, sometimes uh, animals just don't quite understand uh, what you're trying to do and why you're trying to do it. Um, this bull here... <laughs> Uh, decided that he'd had enough and, and, and was gently trying to suggest that to the owner. Um, nobody was hurt, of course, but uh, that makes for, makes for some uh, excitement. Um, once, we coax the, uh, once we coax the calf into that, the picture pose, as we call it, uh, there's, there's one of the best deer getters I've ever had. Um, uh, once we coaxed him in, uh, that's when a good ear getter makes his money. Uh, you can do a lot, uh, you know, photographers use Photoshop, they use Adobe Lightroom, and, and you can only do so much in those two programs. Uh, the one thing you cannot do is you cannot put the attitude in. What makes the picture? Um, and the only way that is extracted is from that ear getter. Uh, the ear getter, of course, is the guy right in front of the calf trying to get his attention, trying to basically spook him but not scare him into running. Okay? Jim. Jim, for a shike. Yep, you've cut out again. Sorry. <laughs> you don't have a very good Internet connection, Brad. What would you like me uh, to switch to? Uh, no, we're all right. We're all right. We're all right. Okay. Um, this uh, this this slide now currently is is uh, I can you know I can turn my uh, hotspot on if I need to. Well, you might. It's you're just cutting out quite a bit. I'm not sure the best way to. You want to go on and I'll 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 hook up my hotspot. Yeah, why don't I move on to Katina, and then you can pick back up at the end with anything else, too. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Sorry about that, guys. Here's Katina. Okay, guys. So, nice to meet everybody. I'm Katina Costeros. If you don't know me, um, I live in Texas, um, outside of San Antonio now. So, um, I am the owner of Show Photo by Katina. Uh, we specialize in doing um, show photography. We do other photography also, but that's our main focus. So I kind of want to talk with you guys today about um, backdrops, um, hot shots, and little other things. Um, so when it comes to backdrop of photography, um, I find it that there's some main points that you really need to know when you're going into a show. Um, the backdrop, the bedding, um, and having the essential tools that you need um, to get those shots at the backdrop. So when it comes to a backdrop, my biggest thing is, is do not have a shiny backdrop. That is like a nightmare for any photographer. Been there, done that, you don't want to do it. So um, here are some examples of some backdrops. Um, the one to the left is um, San Angelo's backdrop that they've had in the past. Um, they have a new backdrop this year, but this is an old one. And then to the right, um, it is Rodeo's Austin's backdrop. Now, um, these both are matte backdrops, which are awesome. Um, but one thing you can tell is 
the size difference. So bigger is better when it comes to backdrops big time. So um, if you go to the next slide, Jennifer, um, when we have the animals on the backdrop, as you can see, you know, here's this deer, plenty of room all around on the right hand side. And then on the left hand side, we've got this goat um, with just the exhibitor, his family members and the judge, and it is still not big enough. <laughs> I can maybe make an eight by 10 out of it, but if I had anybody else in that picture, I'm going to be adding background and it just becomes an editing nightmare. So having a large backdrop is really essential. I like to have um, 14 feet tall, if not taller, and then, you know, 20 feet wide or wider. I know that seems ginormous, but when you get a kid and family and, you know, sometimes that kid's going to stop in one spot, sometimes they're going to spot stop, you know, right where they need to. Other times they're going to stop five feet further than they're supposed to. So having a large backdrop really can help you in the long run. Um, there's different companies all over that you can order backdrops from. Um, when you, some shows, you know, I have to bring my own in. Others, um, they provide for like these shows. So um, that's just something to really make sure you're looking at. Um, if you go to the next slide. So, um, so that's kind of on the backdrop. Um, oh, and I forgot, sorry forgot my topics. Um, so, sorry, Jennifer, go back one. Okay. So, um, also when we're doing backdrops and stuff, um, bedding and whatnot, um, I, you know, shavings, I think is totally fine. Turf works, um, as long as you have it taped or pegged down, it's really important. Um, colored shavings are awesome if you can get them. Um, like to have a little bit of a mound if possible, or if you have a nice flat ground, then that works also. Um, you're getting tools that we like to use. It can be pom-pom, mirror, um, a plant on a stick, somebody making noise, a noise maker, whatever it really takes at this point. <laughs> Don't be a fool, just get the ears, <laughs> is my base thing. Um, with pigs, of course, a pig pan, um, a top of a lid, spray bottles, totally essential, and, and more than one spray bottle, you know, three to five <laughs> easily, because those things break and can be a pain. Um, and some of the tricks that we have for pigs going on to that topic is um, we can use marshmallows, cake mix, um, vanilla wafers. I try to use things that I know because we show pigs also things that we train our pigs with in the beginning. And so it kind of helps. Um, sorry, little one needing me for a second. Um, <laughs> so those are kind of the things. And of course, having somebody really good on the pig pan and having somebody really good helping get ears and setting up that animal is really essential at the backdrop because you want the experience to be a good experience for everybody. You don't want it to be frustrating and then get upset. You know, patience at a backdrop is crucial. So um, just remember those things whenever you're doing that. Okay, so we can go to the next slide now. <laughs> so um, biggest thing, and I've been saying this for your thinking out of the box, and I know a lot of people say it, but it's kind of been a motto that I've stuck with from the get-go when I started um, over 18 years ago taking pictures. Um, you want to be creative in what you're thinking and, and being original and being different. So, you know, some pictures work. So like, for example, the picture on the left, um, we were at Arizona national, it rained like a son of a gun and I was out there doing their marketing pictures. And so I wanted to do something neat. And I was like, rain, water puddles, reflection, why not? And it worked gorgeously. So it was kind of something fun and different, but then also like the picture on the right, you know, just a cool ring shot. You have to remember too, when you're when you're thinking out of the box and you're doing these things, you want to make sure you're making the animal look good because you can make an animal look bad really quick and you don't want that. So your creativity also needs to work with making that animal and the kid, everything all around work together. So on our next slide, um, kind of, um, let's see what's it, being original, it kind of goes with hand in hand. So, um, you know, everybody's out there, everybody's wanting to take pictures and do something cool and neat and different, you know, stick to what you kind of know, but then also keep trying new things. You know, a lot of people could say that picture on the left, you know, cut off half the animal's leg and it looks weird, but it's also kind of just a cool different shot. So I went with it. Why not? You can sometimes get something that may not, others may not think work, but I think it's a cool picture. Same thing with the picture on the right of this goat. Yes, we cut off the legs. Big no-no. But if you look more into the picture, 
that judge is on that far left in the background talking about this goat. And it just kind of shows the atmosphere of the show and everything. So it just kind of makes for a cool picture all around. So something a little different. Okay, so next slide, Jennifer. So um, these kind of pictures are kind of my favorite. It's you're showing the essence of these kids and they're showing. So like the little boy on the right, he's the sweetest little thing ever, but when he's in the ring, he is on. And so you just love that, you know, intensity and that moment because it's something that you want to be able to capture for these parents and for these exhibitors because they're going to last a lifetime. It's something different. And also when you're in the ring, you need to remember the atmosphere that's around you. So uh, the one on the left is pig. It's Carter Ward showing in the grand drive. So you've got the judge behind, judge the judge to the left. He's driving the pig towards. It's a neat picture because it's showing everything all around and it's making the pig look good and it's just a neat, intense moment. So, all right, so next slide. Okay, this is my big thing. I tell all my photographers, do not miss this shot ever. I don't care if you take 50 pictures of this moment, get this shot, that handshake, that slap. Those are, those, they're so important. They are just so critical. So like the one on the left, like, and I'm not opposed to asking the judge. I want to ask who they're going to pick, but ask if they're going to do something fun and, and different. And so um, Nick Mock, our judge, I should have known he was going to do a slap because he did it at Houston a couple of weeks prior. So I asked him, well, I'm like, you're going to do something cool. He's like, oh, heck yeah, you just wait for it. So click, click, click. You had to be ready for him because he goes quick. <laughs> so. And then, you know, also this, this handshake, you know, I'm getting her. It's that in the moment there's like five or six before and five or six after this shot. But this is the moment where they met. She's smiling. He's smiling. It's just kind of a cool picture all around. So like I tell my friend, just don't miss that shot. You know, be prepared and be ready because you just never know. And so on the next slide, you also don't want to forget these pictures after. It's that moment where the parents are hugging, there's crying, there's emotion, there's laughter, there's all these things that are happening after everything's all said and done, as animals are selected and everything's done. And you want to do those. And, you know, camera equipment is crucial when it comes to this. You know, you want to have that higher end camera equipment. I know it's, it's expensive, and but if you're wanting to get in this and do this, you have to put forth that expense. Um, I use all Nikon cameras. Um, some of my photographers use Canon. I'm not, I said either way, you're good. I started out using Canon and then switched to Nikon. So um, either way, you're good. You know, and both of these shots, these are both shot with, um, let's see, a Nikon D750 with, um, let's see, a Nikon 70 to 200 2.8 lens. And I just love those, that lens because it's phenomenal and you can do so much with it. You know, um, I go into events where it can be screamingly dark and orange looking to super bright. So, you know, having good camera and having a good camera lens is essential tools um, to really help things along. So let's see. And these are just a few of my favorite shots um, that I've taken over um, the last year. So um, this is one I've used a lot because I really do love this picture of this guilt. It was just kind of fun. I love when judges stop talking and you can get a cool picture and it just kind of, there was a whole bunch of pictures and this just ended up being the best one of her, you know, head right, top look good, she's standing, she just looks neat. So it's something kind of different. Um, the next shot is um, tail heads. I do love these kind of shots, they're kind of fun. You know, um, this ended up being the Grand Steer at Arizona National, so it was kind of fun to be able to capture this for them um, prior, you know, them getting ready and everything. So something kind of different. And then, let's see, last shot, I don't remember what it is. Oh, yes, okay, so these are probably my favorite, or one of my very favorite always going to be um, Brody Austin. We do um, pictures down at the Capitol at the museum, the Bubble at the museum. And so when out on a limb asked if we could go in the street and take pictures, they said yes. This is kind of, kind of a cool thing we've gotten to do since for Brody Austin, and it's just kind of a cool once in a lifetime thing for these kids that we get to do. So, um, and this is, you know, that being unique and being different. So, you know, just practice, 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 um, learn your camera. And um, that's kind of it for me. Hope that helps. <laughs> that's great. Appreciate it. We'll um, keep moving on and 
Feel free to add your questions as we go, and we'll get to those when everyone's done. So next up, Heidi Anderson, the owner of Legacy Livestock Imaging. Hey there. Um, I'm Heidi Anderson, and I think I may even have one up on Brad on the Road Warrior thing today. I am in the parking lot of a Starbucks because I'm driving to a sale. So <laughs> Dealing off of Starbucks uh, uh, internet here today. So, um, yeah, I'm actually we're actually out of Topeka, Kansas, but I would go with that. I think I from about August till about March, we don't see home a whole lot. So, um, what we focus on, we do some we do some of what Brad does, and we do some of what Katina does, um, but we primarily work with. Um, farms and ranches about branding themselves and about um, telling their story throughout the industry. We do that with um, some small farms and ranches, some big farms and ranches, and as well as some corporate entities as well. Um, I would be able to read my own writing here. There we go. <laughs> um, a lot of the photography that we work with and that we work on is um, really trying to let me see. Hold on. I'm going to change my view here real quick. I'm just getting too old. I can't, can't read my writing on these. Um, the first thing you see regarding somebody's sale, and this is getting significantly more into the seed stock side of things. Uh, when you, The first thing you see regarding somebody's sale, regarding um, what they're wanting to offer for the year is either an ad or a um, or when that um, image comes through on Facebook for the first time or when an image comes on a catalog cover in your mail. Um, how do you differentiate? What makes people um, stop scrolling through their Facebook and stop on yours so you can go in and see all of um, Brad's amazing profile pictures and stuff like that. But what's going to make you really stop in that um in that news cycle to go through and investigate further, especially when you're talking with Angus. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> um, you're, the Angus and Herford breeds, where you have very similar um, genetics, where you can have the same genetic basis from one ranch to another. What differentiates you? What makes you different? Why should I stop at your place? Why should I drive eight hours to your place? to buy my cattle um, and that's a lot of what we work on uh, these are just a couple of catalog covers from this year um, that we've worked with so uh, can you go ahead and go to the next slide there we go okay three eyes impact identity and information kind of what we've been talking about already is impact why will it make you stop we are a very visual society and if it's not we want to make people stop and investigate further. Um, identity, this is a personal business, kind of what I touched on before. What defines your business? And then information. You know, who are you? What kind of a sale is it? When is it? Where is it? I mean, these are all pretty basic things, but it's all things that have to happen in order for it to be an effective ad, catalog cover, Facebook post, all of that kind of stuff. All right, go ahead. Okay, but this is my favorite part. <laughs> the rest of the story. Um, there is, when it comes down to it, everything that all of us are doing is still so relationally based. It's all about relationships. Um, you're not gonna buy cattle from somebody you don't trust honest you're not going to buy cattle from somebody who doesn't have the I mean they may have quality in a picture they may have but you're still going to want to deal with the people so why do you differentiate differentiate yourself and how do you differentiate yourself all right go ahead this is just an assortment of different things that may make different families um, different <laughs> that was a lot of difference in one sentence. Sorry. Um, like that top left is walkers from down in Arkansas, and they're very show 
oriented family. And they, so that exemplifies them and that exemplifies their program. Where you have that top right where that's actually a club cap producer, but they are also huge farmers um, and that's how they wanted to differentiate theirs. And then you have, you know, like the bottom center one is actually a show family in California, but it is, um, they also have a big commercial operation. And that is one of those things in the show industry. There are a lot of families who have an exorbitant amount of success in the show ring, but also run big commercial operations. And if we can go in and, you know, show these aren't just show families, they do run huge herds and they still drag everything to the fire and everybody gets a little ranchy and a little punchy. So, you know, but it is, it's that it's what makes you unique. What makes you approachable? What makes people want to do business with you? All right, go ahead. And here's the other thing. I mean, people ask all, ask me all the time how to take a picture like I take a picture. But what I would challenge everybody is, you know, you don't need to take a picture like I take a picture. You don't need to take a picture like Brad takes a picture or like Katina takes a picture. You need to take a picture, especially when it comes to the bigger picture things. Um, use your own eye. Everybody, there is a certain amount of art form to all of this. And take a step back. See the big picture. Um, I always say, if you really want to do photography, Find 20 photographers, follow them on Facebook, and make about eight of them people who don't do livestock. Um, just find something that you like and then figure out why you like it. You know, why do I like that? Oh, I like that it's kind of a grungy look. Oh, I like that it's kind of a, you know, a softer look. Um, I li really like the way that this guy takes profile pictures. You know, well, why do I like the way? Because you know, what angle is he standing at if he's doing that? Um, you really just have to look at what you see and what your vision is. Is that my last slide? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so, too. That's all I got. Great. Brad, did you want to, thank you so much, Heidi. Brad, did you have anything okay. else you wanted, do you want me to flip back to your slides? You know, I'm. Uh, it'd probably be easier just to answer any questions out there. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I can I can pick up where I left off, but I, I think probably everyone. Okay. Everyone well, we'll get we'll start with some questions, and then if we have any filler time, I'll just kind of throw some of Brad's pictures we we scooped hey, by. I do, I, I do want to echo what Heidi just said there. Um, it, it, it so many photographers think that uh, they get confused as to who is working for who. And whenever you go into a, to an operation and you realize that you're working for that client and they're not working for you, uh, that really will grow a business. How you treat uh, your, your clients uh, determines how much success you're going to have. And, and um, uh, it's just that simple. We, within the industry, there's every sort of example that you could find. So uh, just remember that there's nothing that'll grow a business like your personality and, and, and really giving a care about every, not, not just the good ones, but every person's product that you come in contact with. So there, go ahead. So a couple quick questions here. One, one that I wanted to make sure that we got to, can you guys let us know what is your favorite lens? Well, I think they both typed it in the comments, but I'll say it out loud too. Um, I love, love my 70 to 200 2.8 lens. Um, it's probably the most versatile lens that I use. Um, I also use a fixed 50 millimeter lens um, quite a bit. And my current favorite, but it's kind of a pet favorite, is I have a fixed 85 millimeter that's a 1.4. And it's pretty cool and it's a lot of fun. Um, it's just a real really neat piece of glass, but it's not quite as universal or as, um, it's the 80, 70 to 200. If you want to take pictures and you want to take pictures of livestock, yeah. get that one. <laughs> yeah, agreed. 
Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. Uh, just, everybody, the blur is kind of the, the, capturing, um, the capturing part of everybody try, everybody, every novice tries to figure out how you get the blur. Well, it's, I mean, it's just as simple as a fixed 2.8. And that 70 to 200 is probably the most user-friendly as far as distance uh, oh. close and, and away uh, as any. I, I, I see on the comments there uh, wanting to know about some video tips. Now, when I video, uh, this gets a little bit intense here. For those of you who know, there are, there are full image sensor cameras and there are partial image sensor cameras. I use actually a partial image sensor camera, which uh, uh, when I video, and I use a weird lens. I use a 28, a Pro Canon 28 to 300 push pull. Push pull meaning you just slide it like a telescope. And uh, by using it on a partial image sensor, it takes it time and again the distance. So if I'm in a I like that big pin. I like that 35-yard long pin. Well, that gets turns into several feet when they're at the opposite, very opposite end. So uh, that's that's. I don't know anybody else that uses it. I don't even know if they make it anymore. It was about three thousand dollars for the lens alone. But uh, that's that is one thing. Also asking about what we just edit a, a video. We edit the videos, the sale videos, uh, actually in in iMovie just like you do. It's just too handy. It's built into. I use all Mac products. And uh, those are simple. You knock the auto out, and you get what you want. And uh, uh, if I'm going to do a, a, a more of a commercial work, I'll, I'll step on up to the pro versions uh, of Adobe's. But uh, um, you know, day in day out, we just use iMovie. It's just too simple. So I think I saw a question up there too about how we all started. Did I see that somewhere? Yep. Yeah, it's yep. Right. Um, I guess I can start that. Um, I actually started as a professional photographer. It has been 17 and a half years now, but I did not start in the, I, I probably am the only one who did not start in the livestock industry. Um, I married a farmer after I was already a photographer. So um, that's how I started in the livestock industry was um, by marriage. <laughs> so... <laughs> And I wouldn't change an ever-loving second of it. Get to hang out with y'all. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Katina. Okay. So, um, I, gosh, like I said, it's been over 18 years now. I, I started right into livestock. Um, me and my husband both grew up showing livestock, and so I wanted to stay involved in the industry and loved photography and decided to just go ahead and jump full swing into it. Um, we live in California, and there's only really one other main um, livestock photographer out there, Whitney Hall at the time. And so just decided to start up and do it. And so um, just got into it and been loving it ever since. So got, gotten to travel all over the U.S. and Canada and meet some awesome people. So it's been really fun. So I go way back to whenever I was, uh, I had a, a, a program called the Pasture to Purple program. I would AI the, all the neighbor's cows. Uh, for club kids, and we would split everything over market price. It started in about 1991, and, and along about 1998 comes the Internet, which, which absolutely set the world on fire, obviously. And, and whenever you could put a picture up on your website of a calf, it was like pouring gasoline on dry grass. It would just absolutely spread like wildfire. So I started my, my own for 20 years picturing my own calves. And, um, I mean, back you know, when you had to picture, 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 run to Des Moines to one-hour photo, see if you got anything, whatever. I remember the first digital camera I bought was like 1200 bucks. took AA batteries. You could take about nine pictures, and it would die just when the calf finally got set up. So I've been, been through the whole gamut. Uh, I did not start doing it professionally. In fact, many times in my own picture pen, I said, you would have to be a moron to do this for a living. And so fast forward, <laughs> nine, so many years later, and here I am. I am a moron, but uh, I do enjoy it. I've uh, been doing it uh, seven, eight years full time, and uh, it's grueling. Um, if you're going to do it right, it is grueling, and uh, that you get you get out of it what you put into it, especially in the picture pen. And you have to have to have to be able to work with people and tell them what to do in that picture pen. So that's how I got started. Kind of tripped and fell into it, about like everything else in life. So, 
Okay, I've got one more question for you guys, and then we'll, um, oh gosh, now there's a bunch. So we're going to hit this one question, and recognizing one of our goals is to try to be as on time as we can, and I know we get started a little late, so we will be recording this, so if you need to leave, um, and it's okay, and our presenters are able to stay on for a few more minutes, we'll be sure to, to try to get to all your questions here, um, and then share the recording on social media. But one of the questions that we just received is, what are some of your tips for getting into the show photography? Um, she said she doesn't want to step on anyone's toes and offend any official photographers, but how can she get started? Um, I'll, I'll jump in on that. So I would say start, uh, I don't want to say start small, but that's what I did. I went to jackpots and county shows and offered my service and just did ring shots first and then did backdrop and, um, asked to do internships with photographers like me. I do internships year around. It's a great way to learn the ins and outs of the business. Um, that's what a lot of my photographers, you know, they work for me, but they also work for other photographers or have their own business. And so I'm totally, you know, we're, we're, we're in an industry where we want to help each other out, I think. And so I'm, me along with I'm sure other photographers, we want to help you guys out. You know, I'm not going to do this forever. <laughs> I, I love it, but I, you know, eventually I'm not going to, I might do other parts of it, but just maybe not the show side of it. So there, and there's tons of shows out there. So I say, you know, ask questions, um, you know, try to apply for internships and, and really get out there and, and learn, you know, just getting out there and doing is how I did it. And so just get out there and do, and you, you'll be amazed at how many people will want to help you out. I would say the same thing as Katina, absolutely, um, a thousand times over, because there are a hundred shows out there that, that you can do. There's, and like we offer internships as well. Um, I'd also be sure to, if there is already an official photographer at a show, you need to make, talk to them, talk to the officials at the show. I mean, you don't really want to show up at a show and try to start selling pictures if there's already an official photographer there. I think that would be the only stepping on toes part. But I know me, Katina, a lot of the other ones out there, all we want to do is help out young photographers and help out other photographers. And if we're all making this industry better, that's I know that's my goal, um, and to represent it on the best, in the best light possible. Brad, for your sale videos, what's a good length for sale videos? Um, any big red flags? Do people like any graphics or post editing? Well, here's the deal. I film, uh, I video with, with, with DSLR. So every time I push that button on and off, that is a video clip that has to be sorted one way or the other. So the thing that I've tried to do in the past couple years uh, uh, is narrow the, keep track in my brain, which is very difficult at times, keep track what I have on that particular animal so I'm not making uh, the girl that helps me sort through 50, uh, different files per animal and uh, so you just keep track you know like I said I like a 35 yard pin if, if that bull will come in and he will just saunder back and forth two or three times and give me what I need for I like I like 25 seconds of quality movement okay and the reason why I like that you can bounce on up to 30 or 35 but I do so many uh, online auctions I don't mean like show circuit uh, CW type, I mean like DV auctions and live auctions, and they don't want those file sizes very big. They want them short and sweet and, and, it, and as easy to play in low uh, internet access conditions as possible. So that's why I will film from all oh, two to three minutes worth of, worth of uh, actual clips to get my 25 seconds. Um, any big red flags? No, just, just, uh, you know, the only thing I hear uh, off and on is, you know, boy, we'd sure like to have some rear quarter shots or some front quarter shots. Well, guess what? Those cattle really don't care. Uh, I'm just glad to try and get as much as I can, as easy as I can. Um, and, and most of the time, that is a side profile. Um, the question about do people like any graphics or post editing? You know, uh, I, I've done a Twitter um a Twitter poll on that as far as music or as far as audio, uh, people giving reasons. And, and it was resoundingly like 76 no, uh, 25 or 24 yes. And I think that I think people's attention spans are so short now, 
if they click on that video, all they want to see sitting in their box of briefs and they're in their <laughs> recliner in their man cave is just that calf. They don't care about what you think about it. They're, you're not the one buying it for them. Uh, they just want to see what they want to see as effectively as they can and get out of there. So graphics on the screen, that's a little bit of a bugaboo of mine. Too many times a fancy graphic gets in the way of the calf moving or it distracts from the calf moving. You're not, you're not videoing that calf to see them fancy graphics. You can see that in your ad. You can see it everywhere else. I like just pure video, uh, and, you know, to each their own. Uh, but I just like pure, unadulterated movement and, and get out of there. So, Could you share some tips on manual settings when photographing indoors versus outdoors? Are you talking to me? I'm talking to whoever. I'm talking to <laughs> Heidi. Or Katina, <laughs> what I'm talking. <laughs> I'll let you go first, Heidi. <laughs> well, I think there's uh, that's a loaded question because um, yeah. when you start talking about manual settings, your manual setting, my manual setting on an indoor or outdoor can be 20 different things in a matter of 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So um, it's you know I, I, it's hard for me to say it needs to be this, this, and this in every indoor setting, every outdoor setting. Mm -hmm. Um, nobody ever wants to hear this, but the best thing you can do is go through and read the manual for whatever camera you have. Some cameras don't, um, just the level of camera that they are or the make of camera they are, don't deal with low light no matter what setting you have it on. All three of us um, shoot with professional grade cameras, and so they tend to handle low light significantly better. That being said, um, you just have to be really careful, especially in the low light, that the further you bump that ISO up, um, and again, it's depending on the camera, um, you can really start getting some grain and some noise in the background. So there's a, you know, I mean, that's probably the biggest wimp out way to explain it. Um, I know outside we um, is significantly easier if you're shooting in full sun. It's that just makes everybody's life easier. <laughs> so, but the low light is, um, and just to, if you if you are on manual settings, to continually keep checking your settings, um, especially in low light situations, because that light can change. So, and that's exactly what I'm gonna say. Because here's the thing: every event, every show barn, every it's going to be different. Like the clouds are going to be one way one day and sunny the next, you know, it, it's going to vary so much. So I really can't tell you exactly how to set your camera unless you're standing there with me, then I could, yeah. but I can't, I can't tell you offhand, unfortunately, just sitting here. Cause it, like I said, there's just too many variables that are going to happen for us to be able to honestly give you the right answer. So it's yeah. one of those, it has to be hands-on. And practice, 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 practice. Yeah. Yes. I would like to share something on, uh, I bought a, as I said earlier, with, with when I video, I, I like to use the, the partial image sensor. So I bought a, a new 80, I think it's 80D or D80 Canon. And it, it has the fold-out monitor. And, and it's real cool because uh, when a cap comes in the pen, you just touch the cap on that monitor and it will lock on and stay focused on that cap. So in reference to the lighting, uh, I, I generally use it on the automatic setting until the lighting will not allow it to focus, will not grab. When the square focus box comes up red, then I switch to manual. And then I manually keep dialing down, dialing down until it grabs green focus easy. And whenever I'm on manual and I get her dialed down as far as I can go and it's still not grabbing, that's when we go to the steakhouse because there's nothing you can do unless you want to just clear switch over and focus manually and uh, to get done you can do that but um, you know it's uh, it, it's it's worst case scenario when you do that that's that's it's got to get done and got to get out of there time so if that helps any well and I'll one of the things we did recently and I is we went to a and I don't want to say a lower quality but it was we went to a lower quality camera to do video with because our highest level pro grade stuff wasn't working as well. I mean, we used a we're using we're we're using a partial frame camera too, and it's working significantly better. And it kind of is counterintuitive, 
but those, you know, so what I'm saying to the very accessible, especially when you're videoing yeah. is, um, you don't necessarily have to have a $10,000 camera to do extraordinarily good video with. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys, it's 10.55, so I think we're going to wrap this up. But I just want to say thanks again to Brad and Katina and Heidi. We really appreciate you taking time. We know you guys are super busy, and um, we appreciate figuring out ways we can do our jobs better at our publications, but also ways that we can work with you more effectively. And, um, again, thank you so much. It